Neurodiversity, A Celebration of Disabled Life by Diama Reddy, Teddy Sousa. Illustrated by Hope Breeding. Circle C 2021, no shrinking violet, are rates reserved. Soaring, fluttering, and flailing. Life on the other side of the pandemic. While on vacation, I observed a huge flock of birds fluttering over the house. It was quite an amazing sight. They soared in a magnificent V formation, heading south. Of course, not all the birds were together. I watched a few stragglers come in groups of threes until they all disappeared behind the trees. It felt eerily similar to Hitchcock's film, The Birds. I was Tippi Hendren, watching in a mix of horror and fascination as they swooped overhead, unsure if they would start attacking the roof. Thankfully, they had another agenda. I had my writing project on the back burner at the time, but it made me consider something important. Since the pandemic, a good number of us have spread our wings, wondering if we will fly again. I decided to break my thoughts down into different flight patterns of birds, soaring, fluttering, and flailing. Each style represents where we are in our lives, the changes over time, or alterations at different phases. Soaring. When I think of soaring, I observe doves and eagles. These birds glide across the skies. There is no rush or hurry about them. They are focused on their target. Learning to soar takes time and plenty of practice. You don't learn to soar overnight. You have to make time to slow down. In our fast-paced social networking world, we seem to have the world at our fingertips. We want things done yesterday. The pressure can be stifling. The pandemic has caused many of us to slow our pace, but only for a moment. We can't wrap our minds around soaring. It feels impossible. Sometimes soarers hang around too long in the air and don't land. The dreams are castles in the sky, and there is no end goal. And if there is no end goal, then it will die. Discouragement can set in and cause complacency. While soaring is a goal I strive for, for I sometimes find myself back in the nest and flailing for assistance. Fluttering. Flutterers are the go-getters. They know how to maneuver from task to task. Hummingbirds come to mind when I think of taskmasters. They zip from flower to flower, spreading nectar to each blossom. They go at speeds up to 110 miles per hour and can fly backward. Amazing. They manage to get their tasks done and still find something else to do. Flutterers, however, tend to take on more than they can handle. The harmonious balance of work and rest can flux heavily toward the work side and they overtax themselves. If ignored too long, flutterers become workaholics, damaging relationships with family and friends. It is important to keep work and rest in balance. Flailing. Flailers are folks experiencing circumstances beyond their control or are having a hard time. When I think of flailing, I think of baby birds. Baby birds are vulnerable, unable to fly, and have to learn how to get there. They need support to be nurtured and fed. Flailers are not always willing to ask for support or want help. Sometimes they want to be left alone to figure it out themselves. They will try to be self-sufficient or independent. Being in the nest when going through a rough time is not easy. Admitting you need support or help is not easy. It can feel shameful and embarrassing. Our culture is about self-sufficiency, and when you aren't, you seem to be wrong. I have returned many times to the stage. It is hard and humbling to go into the flailing stage. Much as I desire not to, I have to admit when I can't do it. I need support and I need to know it is okay that I am not there yet. I need to stay and rest in the nest. Where are you at this point? Are you fluttering, focused on tasks? Are you soaring, not rushing, but taking your time to arrive? Are you flailing and need to rest in the nest? I would love to hear your stories. Read by Diava Reddy, Teddy 